film and stuff? Uh, yeah. Special guest appearance by Mr. Burton. They can't see me. This isn't, this lighting isn't black people friendly. Where, where is he? Where, who's, who's talking? Check out his YouTube channel, The Drawing Dead, best editing in the game. Thank you, I appreciate that. I don't know how you do it, dude. Like your your stuff is like, like what you do is it's in right some here. ways hard. I know, <laughs> like it's in some ways a lot harder. I move You know it. what I mean? Like you don't have all the, the fancy tools and stuff. Nah, like it's... I gotta do some ghetto yeah. stuff. <laughs> you wouldn't believe like the tricks I gotta do. The, I bet. The screenshots, yeah. the, the import, I, export. That's, that's impressive, transfers. man. Yeah. It's, that's, that's, that's really impressive. The one good thing is it's convenient. Like I can do it just laying in bed. Yeah, you got everything can, in your hands. On the plane ride. Yeah. It's chilling, playing online. I'm just editing yeah. or live. I got to pull around hard drives and all kinds of memory requirements and rendering issues and all kinds of stuff. But, you know, we get it done. To each their own, you know. We get it done. The entertainment for the fans. Free entertainment. Yeah, because it's not like we're getting paid for this shit. Tens of dollars per Ten, video. Tens of dollars. Tens of dollars. Per video. You heard it here first. Wait, I, gonna, ate, I ate Casey's pudding in the booth. I'm going to get demonetized. <laughs> Stones Live family, hello. We are bringing you a very special Stones Live tonight. Uh, I am joined by the one and only Mr. Jamin Burton, vlogger of the Drawing Dead vlog. We have a like something extra special. Chris Moneymaker is on this table Chris tonight. Uh, a few of you guys may have heard of him. We also have Jeff Boski. Vlogger extraordinaire Jeff Boski. Exactly. Boesky. He's in the game. And we have the one and only Mike, Mike Big P Possel. Okay. It's a half PLO, half no limit hold and mix. So, you know, if you get bored with two cards, we're going to give you four tonight. Uh, uh, PLO. Hi. Trying to get a snap of them ducks. Who are you asking for? Wine. Fine wine. For John? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. I ran it and there wasn't enough. I haven't, I haven't done it yet. Cheers. Cheers. To a good night of gambling. I buy in for $1,000. Blinds are 5-5 five, five with a $10 mandatory straddle. We're playing round by round. We're currently on pot limit Omaha. Apostles under the gun plus one with King Jack Jack five one suit. He makes it thirty dollars. Mark puts in the call with the double suited, uh, somewhat disconnected hand of King Jack seven three. Still pretty standard. I expect this to be a big action game. Not much folding, especially on a live stream. The mailman puts in the call on the button. Money maker tips the waitress for his duck tacos and actions back to me and I pick up aces with the queen three. Suited to the spades. I love aces in Pot Limit Omaha, especially with this action. I think there's only one move here, and that's pot. Make it 160 to go. Uh, I actually wish I had like 500 in my stack so I could just jam any flop when I get one or two callers. But I have a feeling this isn't going to get through much, and I'm just going to build the pot. So hopefully we flop a set, a flush draw, uh, trip queens, a wheel... Or a real low board paired type of board where it's, you know, deuce, deuce, five, and then we can just get it in. What we don't want to see is like a jack, ten, nine, or a seven, six, five type of board where their flatting ranges, which consist of really any four cards, uh, are going to hit the flop and our equity is going to be very low, if not almost drawing dead to sets, straights, even two pairs. Apostle came here to gamble. He puts in the call. Action's back to Mark, and he's like, well, I didn't come here to fold, so let's uh, let's see what the flop is. Uh, of course, I'm out of position, so they kind of know what I'm up to, and they probably are putting me on aces. My other two cards, they don't know, but they definitely are putting me on aces or some sort of Broadway rundown, like King, Queen, Jack, 10, uh, Jack, 10, 9, 8. So we're four ways to a flop. And here comes the flop, $655 in the middle, 653, which looks pretty innocuous at first, but I'm really thinking, wow, am I just going to pot it for 655 and, uh, you know, call it off against two pairs, sets, straights, combo draws, uh, 6789, I'm not doing very good against that either. So I check it to kind of see what my opponents do. Uh, you know, hoping to get to cheap showdown. That's not very likely. Two players check behind me, and the button checks. The turn is an eight, a card I don't like. 
Now hands like a lot of two pairs get there. Eight, six, seven, nine makes the straight. Pocket eights. So uh, plan is to check and evaluate. Not really loving how I played this hand. I think it might just be profitable to just pot it on the flop and just if you're beat, if you're beat. Uh, one thing that I didn't have going for me with the pot flop line is backdoor spades. I think I even double checked my cards. I think if like the three was a spade, I think I go for it for that extra, you know, 5% backdoor equity. Um, part of me might have been scared money. I didn't want to go broke this early and have to reload. You know, I got a few grand in my pocket, but this is a big game. I don't play cash games that often. Possible bets 430, which I assume is for value. I think he's uh, recognizing that the checks behind on the flop are weak. He's putting all of us on mainly over cards, and he wants to deny our equity and get value from his pocket jacks with the five backup. He gets one fold. The mailman somehow has kings, which I wish he would have just repotted pre. I would have had him crushed. He folds. Now it's back on me. And I'm like, wow, now we're heads up. I might just have to go for it. I got one pair with no real draw, bottom pair draw. Do I just shove here for effectively a min raise with one pair? Ultimately, I think better of it and fold. Pocket aces. Okay. Uh, yep. Cheetos. Had a bad feeling about that one. Oh, no. Oh, wait. I just saw the replay, right? When I said aces. Are you talking about the PLO? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. we just saw it. That was, Tell us what. That was a tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I should have just jammed the flop. I had just like a pot size bet left, but I'm like... These guys are playing any two. I mean, the odds of them all having like jack high rundowns and not like four, five, six, seven that just crush that flop. I'm drawing dead. I got no backdoor spades. Four ways. Not for me, but thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. So, and I, I even was afraid he's like thin value betting, uh, just a bare over pair on the turn. But you should still have so much equity. It just really hurt my feelings to see that on the replay. Yeah, yeah, I could have jammed the flop, could have check jammed the turn, but just a pair of aces usually isn't good on that wet of a board. Uh, there was no flush draws. I had that going for me, but uh, it's a tough spot. I don't know. Maybe long term it's a bad, uh, bad fold, but oh, just wanted to chime in on that. Uh, totally understandable. God damn it. Let's see if people are in the chat. I mean, I got owned. Ooh. Flop and post flop. Mm. Oh well, live and learn. Like this is a good hand. Oh, we know. King Jack ten nine, excellent hand. Almost as good as aces in a lot of ways. The very next hand, I pick up a monster on the button. King Jack ten nine. Of course, we're gonna raise it up to the thirty five dollars. We get three callers, and the flop comes all low cards. We do have the nut straight draw. Uh, it's a gutter ball, and the back door spades. When action checks to us, we do have to be weary once again on these low boards. We got the big cards. Due to just blocker effects, odds are they got the low cards. Checks through, and the turn is a queen. A great card. Gives us various straight draws. Uh, pretty much all to the nuts. So it's good to be drawing to the nuts in Omaha. Uh, Postal bets 90. Uh, just, under, uh, just under pot size. And gets an immediate call. I'm probably kind of putting on one of them on a flush draw, maybe one of them on two pair or a set. Uh, queens up is possible. Uh, we don't block any of these combos. So when it comes back to us, we're definitely getting a good price to draw to our straight. Wish it was a monotone board, but we'll play clubs on the river accordingly. Let's see what the action is. We put in the call, over $400 in the pot. Still a little shook from the last hand, and a 10 hits the river. I don't like it's a club, but I do like that it gives me the nut straight. Apostle starts thinking about it and puts in the check. Mark's sitting there with the jack 7, a 5, 4. Pretty much squadoosh. Is he going to bluff at it? He has no club blocker. He does have a jack blocker. And he eventually thinks better of it, checks it over to me. Now the question is, do I value bet and how much? Uh, I could value bet small, say 150 to try to get value from two pair. But I think these guys are good enough that they're not going to be calling with two pair when the flush hits the board, when I overcall the flop. So although it seems like a pretty nitty check, I think it's pretty standard just to check. 
A lot of times I'm going to lose to a low flush in this spot. I will too. Let's do it. Yeah, I've done that, and that's how I have a daughter. <laughs> what? From doing an Asian accent? No, I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pocket jacks for Jeff Boski from the Big Blind. Okay, I'm getting laser focused in here. Let's let's yeah. get this going. So Apostle from Under the Gun, plus one at the ace sign of hearts, went ahead and opened to 20. Now Jeff Bosey is going to three bet pretty large here. Seven and a half X to pocket jack, uh, with pocket jacks. Apostle's calling. Apostle's. This is, it gets everyone else to fold out. King seven ten only one over card to Jeff's uh, jacks and possible in position. Possible in position. I think I would have liked to seen a continuation bet there from uh, from Jeff. I think he's kind of you giving Possible the green light here, unless Jeff is just has it in his head to kind of kind of call him down. This is what I was gonna say. I like the check from Jeff here. Okay, so I think that this. So it is troublesome, more troublesome uh, when he checks back because it is such a wet board. I yep. understand it. But against Postle specifically, I think trying to play a bloated uh, pot against him out of position right. is just like a hard spot for anybody, especially with the hands that's kind of vulnerable, mm -hmm. like pocket jacks. And so I can understand, but he's giving, you know, Postle just every right. option to realize yeah. his equity here. Jeff should feel comfortable now, though. But I will tell you this about Jeff. Again, I said we talked uh, for a few minutes before the stream. He didn't know. He checks again a third um, time. He didn't know Mike Postle. He had just kind of heard stories. He'd never met him. They met like minutes before this this started. So if he has some of that in his head, the legend apostle, he might just be kind of, you know, playing a little slower, just trying to give apostle some rope. I wouldn't be mad at but, that at all. Yeah, I think yeah. on the river there, um, he could have gone some, for some value. Some but value. just like yeah. because apostle is so adept, you never know. Like, so is he going to put me to the test here? Because apostle... That that is Postle's game. Ten dollar straddle still on. Action folds to Rich in the hijack, who makes it forty dollars to go with Ace Nine of Hearts. We got the Eight Seven of Hearts on the button. Pretty standard call. Could three bet. John goes for the trap, just calling Ace King out of the small blind. I don't know if he thinks there's going to be a squeeze from behind and he wants to back raise, or he just wants to pay, play carefully, flop at Ace or a King post flop. Does come Jack high. Rich whiffed. And we have the nut straight draw action checks to Rich, who eventually puts in a C bet. $105 is the price. He doesn't have much equity. Ace high might be good sometimes, but he's an action player. He's in there to mix it up. Uh, I don't think it makes much sense to raise here. I think we're just going to call in position, try to hit our straight or bluff on future streets, depending on the run out. We could definitely represent a set. Or a club draw, depending on how the action goes. King hits the turn. Uh, another brick for Rich. Is he going to continue to barrel? That's the question. He knows I got something, but will I fold that something? He lines up a bet of $220. Now, if we call this, we're going to have just over a pot size bet left for the river. I think we're getting okay odds to chase. This is really putting the pressure on Jeff here. He does find a call. Let's see if he has a plan. If he misses, which he does, and he can take this away with. If this goes check, Jeff should be betting here a good portion of the time. I mean, that flush draw coming in, Rich can't like that. Rich definitely would not check if he does make a flush draw in this spot. He does check. Jeff has to bet here. He should know it's the only way he's going to win this spot. Eight high is never going to be good. He can easily be representing uh, a flopped, open-ended, flush draw, straight draw, and he does bet. Oh, he moves all in. 
impossible for Rich to call here. Good job, Jeff. Whether this works or not, this is a definitely a long-term plus EV play. And that's one thing you guys, you, you always have to keep that uh, in the back of your mind. You're always trying to make plays that are long-term plus expected value. That doesn't mean they're going to work every time. We're here with a 35 to 50 year old Mexican male playing at Stones, gambling it up. That's right. So you, have, you have enough practice with this, right? Hot rod. It's very hot. It's a hot rod. I haven't tried it yet. I haven't tried it yet. You're, you're, you're still taking pictures. Yeah. With blinds at 5-5 five, five with a $10 mandatory straddle. Apostles first to act. He bumps it up to $40. We're now playing Pot Limit Omaha. He has the Ace, Ace, King, Seven, double suited, a beautiful hand. Steve puts in the call with the pocket tens, eight, four. Mailman folds. Rich, he puts in the call. Action folds to me in the big blind. I have Queen, Queen, Jack, 10 with hearts. A very pretty hand. Probably a little bit too weak to be three betting out of position, though. When the flop comes, Ace, Queen, Three. I'm ecstatic. We got middle set. We got the backdoor flush draw. We got the nut straight draw. Now the question is how to play it. Apostle is very aggressive. We're going to check it to him, of course, in flow. See how this action plays out. He puts out a bet. $110. The other two players quickly fold, which is kind of a tell that they just got nothing on this board. So what does Apostle have? He could have a hand like Ace-King, Jack-10, Ace-King, Queen-10, Ace, three, four, five. I put in the call, and the turn is a five. So this is a good card for me. I don't think he has many two, four in his range, but he will have a lot of ace, three, ace, five, ace, queen. Rarely pocket threes, but the only hand we're losing to clearly is pocket aces. So now the question is, when he bets $200 and I have $1,500 behind, what's my best play? Do I just call? and go for the river check jam. The main problem with a river check jam is that a seasoned player like Apostle knows that this is gonna be very rarely a bluff. Of course, it depends on what the river is, but I think our better plan is to raise it now, try to get as much money in while our hand equity is high. Like I said, we only lose to one hand. We wanna deny equity from hands he could be drawing with. He could have the king high flush draw. He could have two pair. He could have a lower set. So we want to get it while the getting's good. So our best plan, I think, with relative stack sizes, is to pot it. Let's make it $1,000 to go and go with it. If he shoves, we're calling it off. If he calls, we're shoving any rivers. Let's play over a $3,000 pot on the Stones live stream. I announce pot, and he looks disgusted. That's a good sign. Now we're hoping for a call. Let's uh, casually put our $1,000 out there, let him know we mean business, while he contemplates his options. He eventually says, all right, let's just get it in. How many times do you want to run it? I'm all in. I say, doesn't matter. He says, doesn't matter to me. I say, all right, whatever, twice, let's just run it. And let's see what the first run brings. Boom! A five. We got a boat. The second river's an offsuit nine. We show our set of queens, and he shows top set of aces and scoops us for a huge pot. The feeling is horrible, but the only thing to do is reach in your pocket and pull out another $1,000 to get back in the game. The table's silent. I think they were all rooting for me, but it wasn't meant to be. 
Guess I'll just chalk it up as a cooler. My other option was to check call turn, check call any river, just to keep the bluffs in his range. Think I went with the right play. If I didn't turn equity with the flush draw, I think it would have been an easier check call. But it is what it is. Let's try to run this $1,000 into something much bigger. The game's still good. The stream's still live. Let's get it.